Nothing beats pounding away at a firm, tight and responsive brake pedal. Unfortunately, my Fanatec V3 brake at this point in time is mushy, squidgy and just slightly depressed. So in this video, I'm going to fix my Fanatec V3 pedal. I'm going to tell you and show you how I did it. And I'm also going to explain why you want to set your brake pedal up, how I'm setting mine up. Let's get going. I'm trapped in a sim rig. Hit the like button and subscribe so I can go outside. Did I ever tell you guys how much I like tea? Slot cockpits. Yes, they're absolutely amazing. You can position things wherever you want. But even better than that, once things are positioned, if you need to do any maintenance, for example, change a load cell pedal settings, uh, you can just un unscrew it and uh, take it off. It's, it's just super handy and quick to deal with. Well done, SimLab. Well done, T-Slot. The world has been made a better place by T-Slot and T. Ah yes, the dining room table used for eating food and adjusting sim racing equipment. Now to get access to the compartment that has the uh, rubber plastic dampeners, you first need to undo a little screw that holds a uh, or adds friction to a rod that uh, keeps the load cell arm attached to the pedal arm and allows it to rotate. You just use an Allen key to poke that rod out and also you can actually lean on the uh, on, on the actual load cell arm a bit to allow it to come out. Um, also it really helps if you lubricate the bit that just popped out there for future insertion and extraction. Pro tip number one. Instead of removing the motor, which you'll see there's one on the accelerator and also one on top of the brake pedal, uh, you can just push the load cell arm in and then push the load cell through the bottom. This saves you all of t two minutes or so, but uh, time saved is time gained. Before you poke it through though, you will want to make sure the cables are removed from the little cable clips at the uh, side and bottom, otherwise the cable will get in the way and if you push it and force it, you, you might break something, which would be very unfortunate. Um, so yes, make sure you remove those cables. But here you see we've got the load cell through the bottom of the pedal and we remove the load cell arm, revealing the rubber that gives the pedal the feel, the squishiness and uh, the mushiness that we don't want. So we give it a shake upside down. If they're lubricated correctly, they should fall out of that socket without any issues. Now I was using and still will be using the brake performance kit, but I was using a green, a red and a cut down red and not the little PU foam at all. And I'm going to be replacing that to make it harder with three greens. Well, two greens and a cut down green. I'm not going to use that PU foam again because the PU foam again is just squishy and I find these uh, these greens, uh, which are the hardest ones in that brake performance kit, are still relatively squishy so we're just going to cut down one of these greens so we can go green all the way pro tip number two make sure if you're cutting the elastonomer to cut it slightly smaller than the pu foam because it doesn't compress as much and you still want to be able to get that load cell arm back up through the v3 pedal so you can reattach everything now I decided to sand it off to make sure it's totally flat because I haven't cut it perfectly because I'm crap with a saw, but also uh, sanded the edges a tiny bit to make sure that it is completely nice and smooth to try and reduce any potential uh, st sticking and snagging when it's in that uh, when it's in the socket. Probably didn't make any difference, but uh, you know, attention to detail, guys. That's what it's all about. Now, before you jam those elastonomers back in the hole, make sure you lubricate them with either lithium grease or the grease that comes in the Fanatec brake performance kit. Of course, if you forget, you'll put everything back together, screw your pedals back onto your sim rig, and then you'll realize and have to take them off the rig and go through the whole process that you've already been through, which would be really depressing, really demoralizing, and very annoying. And of course, it's something I, I've never done myself. Now, this is the fiddly bollocks part of this. Uh, you really need to use the Allen key to get that load cell in the right position and uh, to then get that metal rod back in place. Once you've done this a few thousand times, you can, you can do it pretty much seamlessly. So if you've had Fanatec V2 pedals, 
uh, you, you'll be good at this. Um, again, lubricating that little rod makes a huge difference, makes this a lot easier. But there you go, for us, it just went straight in. No editing at all, completely just went straight in. But there you go, that is, uh, that's pretty much it. The, the, we're there with the pedal. We, we've got those in. We've now effectively got a firmer pedal. Look at that, it's barely moving. Of course, your foot is a lot stronger than your hand. Uh, you can see our whole table's moving there. That is, that is turgid, and that's how I wanted it. Now, with the pedals off the ring, it's a good opportunity to get rid of some of that dust that had built up on it. I like to use a little paintbrush. It not only lets me be accurate with my dust busting and getting in those little nooks and crannies, but it also means I'm not going to accidentally static discharge on the circuit board there, which you might do if you're using some kind of big nylon... Uh, dust duster so paintbrush does the trick uh, also this is a really good time to get some uh, some wd-40 or lubricant into those pivot points on the pedals and that will stop them from squeaking and squealing which i believe is quite a common problem with these though uh, I've, I've applied it previously and it's, i've not had any issues with that like most things if it's if it's making noise give it a bit of lube and it'll be happy now this footage could just be the footage from the beginning of the video played in reverse, but I assure you it's not. Right, it's time to feel if our effort was worthwhile and uh, the pedals are here. Oh, that's so much better. That's so much better. Now it looks like it still is moving. It still is moving. I like a little bit of movement, but... That is way, way, way firmer and uh, feels way more responsive without without so much mush in there. That just feels a bit more beefy. Spot on. Now, uh, we do need to dial this in. And to do that, what I recommend doing is setting the brake force setting to 100% on the wheel. If uh, you're using the Fantech load cells, and asking me Fantech... Uh, pedals with the wheels as you can adjust the wheel strength on the uh, on the wheel if you want to so I'm going to set the brake force to a hundred percent here uh, which is the weakest which requires the most amount of pressure to get it to fully actuate I'm then going to push it as hard as possible as to the point where it gets to the stop point I'm gonna click set max there and that should now have set the maximum brake pressure and uh, we don't really need to set the minimum here. It seems to, it, we're not getting any brake without any pressure on it. If you adjust the uh, throw, the, the um, red rod on the back, the red rod, the red screw on the back of it, which will adjust the tension of the preload, um, it will set the, it will, it will add pressure to it and you will have to set the minimum. Uh, we seem all right there. If I gently tap the brake with my, with my toe here, I mean, that's still like a little bit, quite a little bit of force, but like not too much, gently, a gentle tap, you know. We're getting that perfect amount of little bit of input there, which is what you want. So in those situations where you want to just dab the nose of the car into a corner bit, redistribute the weight uh, without slowing down too much, you want to have that ability to just apply a little bit of force nice and easy. That That's spot on. Um, and you, you, But you don't want it so that if you brush your brake pedal by accident with your foot that you that you uh, set the brake and you certainly don't want it coming on when you're not touching the brake pedal. But that's spot on. So then now I can uh, adjust my brake force back down to sort of whatever it is i normally have it at. depends on the car you know if you use an abs cars you can have uh, more sensitive brakes and things or you know it depends on the sim it depends on loads of things but i, I have it normally about 60 percent or so on the brake force meter and uh there we go we are we are set and ready and uh oh man it's gonna be absolutely awesome to drive now so much better than it being just a total squidge fest um we're still going to crash into other cars, but I'm not going to be able to blame the brake pedal. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to find something else to blame. Uh, maybe we can we can blame the car in front for braking too soon, the the tyres for being old, um, or may maybe the track's damp. Lots of sims have wet weather now, so those are the excuses we'll default to now. Uh, but we certainly can't use the brakes as an excuse. Um, so yeah, hopefully, guys, that has uh, helped those of you with a Fantech V3 pedal. I, I highly, highly recommend setting your brake pedal up to be responsive like this as opposed to being mushy uh the, the biggest reason is so 
the sort of general philosophy I have is that you, you can set the elastonomers up so that you feel a different texture in the elastonomers as you push on them, which then gives you um, a sort of feel for how much brake pressure you're, you're putting on the brake through the way that the, those rubbers then resist that amount of pressure. Uh, now, you can do that. Um, and I think that's what the sort of default uh, PU foam and everything is kind of supposed to emulate. It gives you, oh, it's a little bit loose, then it gets tight and whatever. And you, you know, you can, you can set it up so you've got that different range of feel to it. But what I found is if you set it up so that it's basically um, a consistent squish and it's, it's fed pretty much uh, solid to push against, what you're really feeling is your f the amount of pressure that's going through your foot on the brake pedal and what that means is regardless of the brakes that you're using like in this case we use the fire v3s but if you're using the csl elite load cell or other load cell brakes or any other equipment it's always going to be consistent that feeling of how much pressure you're putting through your foot on the brake pedal as opposed to it being different from kit to kit elastonomer to elastonomer and all, all the other variables uh and also, I find by setting these pedals up like this, it's just, it's just more immediate and more snappy and actually closer to uh, to other pedals, other higher-end pedals that I've used. So um, I highly recommend doing this. Um, but as as with all sim racing stuff, it's whatever, whatever tickles your pickle. Um, so I hope that was handy for you guys. I hope you enjoyed it. You know, uh, if you did, remember to click the like button. Remember to subscribe. If you're looking to get Fanatec equipment, remember we do have a Fanatec affiliate link. It's in the description. So if you click that before buying stuff, I get money and I really appreciate that. But uh, until the next video, guys, thank you very much for watching. Happy tea drinking and goodbye.